You're listening to Packers Talk Network. PackersTalk.com Do you want to experience the thrill of a Packers game at Lambeau Field? If so, be sure to get your game tickets from the longtime trusted source in Wisconsin, Ticket King. Visit their locations in Milwaukee and Green Bay or just go to their website, theticketking.com. Again, that's theticketking.com. Good evening, Packer Nation. We are back. Just like the pack is back. Is it too early to say that? No? Is the pack back, guys? It's not too early Uh, to say that. Pack is back. Let's try this again. Let's try another (laughs) intro. (laughs) Is the pack back? Who is back? What are we talking about? (laughs) Good night, everyone. (laughs) Check New York Bozo! New York Bozo! I gotta get my biceps a little bigger. Yeah, you can always work on that. Oh, I can sure use a hot dog with chili. You know what time the game starts? Hey, you got any left-handed footballs? We need to fire him. Is anybody else tired or is it just me? Good thing I'm in shape. You got any eligibility left? I got some advice for y'all. Take two weeks off, then quit. Good evening, Packer Nation. We are back. Talking Packers football. Had a Thursday game, kind of threw us off a little bit. Waited a long time. We're still waiting a long time because the game has not happened yet. But we are packed to the future. Thank you for joining us. Joining me tonight, we got Dusty. Dusty, how you feeling, buddy? Man, I'm feeling real good. I got a pumpkin in my hand. Fall weather outside. Like you said, I miss the Packers. It seems like it's been like three weeks since they last played a game. But man, I'm... I'm feeling good right now. Feeling real good. Do do the leaves change colors in Kentucky? They absolutely do. They absolutely wow. do. Wow. Beautiful yeah. colors? Beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> the most beautiful colors, John. Fall colors? Yes, sir. You know do it. You just watch them do you just watch them fall and drink a PSL? Yeah. <laughs> well, I it's actually <laughs> law that if it's ten AM in Kentucky you have to have a bourbon in your hand, so I watch them fall while drinking <laughs> bourbon. So <laughs> that sounds like the best law ever. You should really come visit us. <laughs> I, w- I will visit you, Dusty. Mark my words. Thanks, Richard Richard Nixon style. Jordan, <laughs> how, are you? how are you? I'm doing all right, man. It's good to be with you guys tonight. Hey, it's nice to have you. Uh, missing tonight is um, what he would call himself, our commander in chief, Brian. Um, so you know what they say? When the cat's out of the house, the mice will play. So we are we are gonna have ourselves some fun tonight and and we're and we're gonna get after some nice some nice Packers talk. Um uh, we are going up uh against a scorching hot Falcons offense this week. Um they are just dominating. They got um what you could argue is the best receiver in the National Football League in Julio Jones. Um my fantasy my fantasy team definitely attests to that and so on and so forth but the guy's a freak matt ryan's playing some very solid football some good running backs so we got a test this week and we're going to get you guys informed as to what the packers need to do to win and all that jazz so we're going to get started with our coin toss segment um and so this week we just got a couple uh three head-on heads this week so um brian or dusty b jordan and the first question i got for you guys tonight is are the packers making the playoffs this year. So Dusty, Ooh. if the coin lands on heads, you will be telling me that the Packers will make the super the playoffs this year. <laughs> super Bowl, I was jumping the gun. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and it is heads. Dusty, Woo. the Packers make the playoffs this year. Yeah, okay. I mean, the Packers have not looked great uh, for the most part this year. They've played, I mean, you could argue they basically played one solid game of football between the first half of the Lions game and the second half of the Bears game. Uh, and going into the season, uh, there was there was some jokes about going 16-0, and but then even, like, <laughs> kind of dial it back a little, you say, well, you know... They were they they had I think by football outsiders metrics or by projections I think they had the like thirtieth easiest schedule in the league, uh, pre- looking at say like twelve and four thirteen and three was not unrealistic, 
Uh, but a lot of the teams that looked bad are not really that bad this year. Um, we got the Falcons coming up this week, which we're going to talk about more. Uh, they look terrible, and I mean, we'll see what happens this week. That defense is is garbage, just absolute rubbish. But that offense is ridiculous. Uh, I mean, they're not a great team by any means. They're four and three, but uh, they can put up points, and the Packers have a hard time. The Colts have not been great, but that offense can score points. And as we all know, we're dealing with injuries in the secondary. Titans, uh, I mean, the Titans are real bad, but I think they're first in that division right now. Redskins have been coming on. Eagles have been really good. Tech, oh, we'll, beat, we'll beat the Texans. Uh, Seahawks, Bears again, which we should win. Vikings and Lions. Like, there's not a whole lot of gimmies uh, in the last half of that schedule. Still, Packers, I believe, can pick it up. Uh, they looked really good second half of the Bears game. I, I wrote, finished my article for the week uh, last night where I kind of looked at a lot of the things they've been doing differently this year. Uh, a lot more rub plays. A lot of dual out, some of the short passing stuff that worked against the Bears. I think they're going to work that in. Uh, I think uh, their lack of depth at running back is actually going to help them. It's gotten Montgomery on the field even when Adams has seen playing time. And Montgomery's has been uh, – he's shown last year and this year he can be a difference maker. Uh, they do not have an easy schedule ahead of them uh, by any stretch of the imagination. But I saw enough in the Bears game – uh, to make me think that they're starting to change up some stuff on offense. They've got the pieces to make a difference. Uh, they are going to struggle a little bit. Uh, I don't know if they're going to win the division, but I, I, they'll make a wild card at the very least. Uh, I, I, they absolutely are going to make the playoffs this year. All right, Jordan, your rebuttal. All right, uh, my counter to that, um, is that, I think even with the way the Vikings look this past week, I think they still – um, with the way their team is set up and particularly the way their defense is set up, I still I think at this point they're still the favorites to win the division. Not overwhelming favorites to win the division, but still favorites. Um, so, yeah, I think more realistically the Packers would be looking at a wild card spot. So you look at some of their teams that you have battling for a wild card spot. Um, you got teams like the Eagles and the Redskins. Um, you got the Cardinals, who, again, they're had a, had a – <laughs> A tough game against Seattle, to, to say the least, or a tough, a tough way to end that one. Um, but, I mean, Arizona, their defense is looking great, so you know that they're going to be making a push. They're a well-coached team. There's a lot of competition here, so the, the, the room for error for the Packers is low. And a lot of the teams that I just mentioned are teams that we actually play coming up in the season. We play the Eagles. We play the Redskins. Um, we have, obviously we have another game against the Vikings. I mean, even the lions are four and three, only a half game behind us. There's a lot of competition for this wild card spot. And with the way that our health at cornerback is, is shaping out and the, you know, and our, our lack of depth at running back while I'm a fan of Ty Montgomery. I mean, there's, there's health issues with that guy. There's, there's questions whether he can be, you know, consistent at the running back position. There's still too many question marks for me right now to say definitively that the Packers are making the playoffs um, even after this win. I mean, it was a win against a bad team. So it was a good that we got the W, but we still don't know what this team is made of. So to say definitively that we're making the playoffs, I'm not ready to say that yet. Jordan, I thought, I thought the, um, I thought the weight, all the weight was going to be on your shoulders and it was going to be like the toughest thing to, to explain to people how the Packers could not make the playoffs. And I thought you made some very solid points and I'm going to give you the win on this one, Jordan. You, you oh, thank deb- you. Wow. You, you debated, is... you debated the crap out of that one. I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to take anything away from Jordan, but uh, I want to say that I got halfway through my point before I remembered that I was arguing for them to make the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was actually setting up a case for them to miss the playoffs. And then I, once I finished with their schedule, I was like, Oh man, I got to, I got to save this somehow. So uh, I don't want to say that I gave that victory to Jordan, but I, I gave that victory to Jordan. You're welcome, buddy. You're welcome. I, I, you didn't win. I lost. <laughs> Dusty, you didn't think the almighty, the almighty John did not know that. I mean, come on. I heard it. I heard it right from the get go. I did. I was a debate champion and my, in my high school of 40 people. That's... And um, that, is a complete, that is a complete lie. And I'm sorry for my deceit. Complete lie. Complete I'm sorry lie. for my deceit. Yes. <laughs> On to better things. <laughs> um, possible better things. I mean, guys, we, we're kind of at this point where, I mean, Jordy, yeah, he was getting some touchdowns early on in the year. Um, lately, it's kind of been a case where he's – you almost – don't even notice that Jordy Nelson is on the field. And that is number 87, 
that is a staple of the Packers offense. And I guess I just kind of want to know if, um, if Jordy date, uh, Jordy's days as a number one, as the number one wide receiver for the green Bay Packers is kind of, uh, winding down and maybe the torch is being passed. Who knows? But, um, Jordy day, Jordy's days as a number one receiver is over Jordan. If it is tails, you are telling me that Jordy's days as a number one receiver are not over. Okay. And it's heads. Jordan, tell so, me why. I'm arguing that his his days are over as a number one receiver. Okay. Um, it's it's with Jordy coming back this year. Obviously, I think there was a lot. Obviously, a lot of optimism considering how the offense played last season. Um, perhaps we just c- kind of took it for granted that he would come back as the same old Jordy. Uh, and it's very clear, you know, we, we see him play this, this season. Um, you can blame maybe some of it on the offense. You can, you can talk about the way the defense is approaching, um, th- this, our offense, but I mean, Jordy isn't the same player he was a couple years ago. Now he's coming off of an ACL tear. So, I mean, to make a judgment about the future, with that in mind is, uh, is, is unfair to him, but, uh, he's also a 31 year old wide receiver. I mean, he's not getting any younger. Um, so the fact that he's coming off that knee injury, he's getting older. If he's losing a step, if you lose a step as a outside receiver, that's a big, that's a big deal. Um, he's not an old, he's not a huge receiver. Um, his, his, his field awareness is probably what separates him from everybody else. And that's where he can still be effective, but to be a number one receiver, you really have to be a consistent deep threat. You have to be a threat all over the field. And right now that's not the case. Now, whether he can come back from that, it's, it's tough when you're, when you're coming back from a knee injury like that. I, I'm not too hopeful that he can be that way. I think he can be effective for the team. I don't think he can be uh, the number one receiver for this team going forward. All right. Um, Dusty. I, I mean, all the things Jordan said are more or less true. He's 31 years old. He's coming off uh, an ACL tear. It, I mean, it's it's hard to come back from that, especially at a position that, that you need athleticism and, uh, for. And Jordy's thing was speed and, and quickness out of breaks, and so far we haven't seen that. But what we do know about ACL tears for the most part is they always say one of the, one of the hardest things to come back from, you can be fully rehabilitated, and it's the mental aspect. And I just – I don't think he's there yet. Uh, you see guys – coming at your knees you're a little more hesitant out of breaks um i mean and the way he hurt his knee was non-contact catching a ball and just trying to spin up field and and then his knee just went out um i think that's in the forefront of his mind i think he's a little slow out of breaks uh in in part because of that i think he's favoring that knee i think he's i think he's 100 percent physically i don't think he's 100 percent mentally and I, i think that's a big thing now whether that's this year or whether that comes next year i don't know um I don't. I think some of the top end speed, like the, some of the elite speed he flashed, is gone. But I also think Jordan talked about uh, the field awareness he has, uh, and I've mentioned many times in the past uh, to just random passerbys on the street uh, that I just come across that uh, Jordy Nelson is the best boundary receiver I've seen since Chris Carter. Uh, his body control, the way he's able to tap his toes and bounce, his uh, he always knows. He always knows where the defender is. He always knows where the sideline is. Uh, and you've, you've seen over the past couple of weeks, maybe not this past week, but uh, he's getting a little bit more of the chemistry back uh, with some of those back shoulder throws. And that's that's dependent on the knee as well. He has to put his foot in the ground and come back to it. And sometimes that's kind of hard with the mental aspect. But I think you're starting to see some of that. So uh, I think even if some of the elite speed is gone, and I, I don't think he's ever going to be as fast as he was, uh, he is smart enough. Uh, to still be a number one receiver, even with slightly diminished speed. I mean, even slightly diminished speed. Like, Jordy was one of the faster receivers in the league. He could be slightly diminished and still be fast enough to cause problems for the defense. And, like, that's the big thing I haven't seen this year is quickness out of breaks. I think once he recovers that, he's he's going to be just fine. He's going to recover uh, that number one ability. Um, I, I attribute it, I, I kind of think of like almost, um, say, uh, CC Sabathia this year. Uh, velocity was down, uh, as, as fastball velocity was going down for a while. I think he topped out at like 91 this year or something, fastball average. Uh, but his ERA, I believe, was under four this year, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, Verlander kind of did the, some of the same things this year. Uh, they're just smart players that have maybe lost a little bit of what made them elite, but they're smart enough and they're good enough, uh, talk for baseball perspective, from like secondary stuff that 
maybe they can't don't throw you their fastball 75% of the time, but that curveball or the slider is so good. And I think that's where Nelson gets you. Like he doesn't have to have top end speed. He doesn't have to beat you with a go route every time that comebacker and the, and the, and the back shoulder throw, like he's so good at those. Uh, I think once he starts trusting himself again, we're going to see that number one Jordy back again. Now, whether that's this year or next year, I don't know. Uh, but there's been enough flashes of it this year to make me believe that that guy's not gone. Wow. Dusty covering multi-sports. In one answer, are you kidding me? <laughs> Dusty wins this, Jordan. Didn't even take a breath. Didn't even take a breath. And and kind of kind of while you were talking, I'm kind of sitting here thinking to myself, wait, I kind of know a guy who's kind of who who's kind of what Jordy can essentially be, and that's um, he pretty much beat us last year in the playoffs, Larry Fitzgerald. I mean, the guy progressively throughout his career has lost that step, but somehow still finds separation. And also at the same time, still has enough speed to like sep- to separate himself and cause havoc with his legs at the same time. So, well, and not to um, get, not to get too deep into it either. Um, Cause I don't want to get too long on this, but um, Fitzgerald is an interesting comparison just because his, his numbers were dipping a little bit and what kind of resurrected him was Arians coming in and playing a whole lot out of the slot. They, instead of being uh, just totally out the outside number one receiver, what you generally think of as a number one, they had him in the slot where you can run anything you want out of there. And Nelson's seen a little bit of time out of there, but I mean, part of it's on Nelson, but part of that's on the coaching staff that if him, some of that speeds diminished, he can still be a weapon. It's just a matter of uh, the, the coaching staff has to put him in, in the it, wherever he needs to be effective, and whether that's in the slot or just wherever he needs to be, uh, they can use him other places than where he's traditionally played, and that's and that's what Fitzgerald has done. I mean, he runs a lot of his plays out of the slot, and it's hard to cover a guy like that out of the slot. And that kind of, I guess, that kind of flows into our last coin toss question, um, to where we could be possibly talking about, um a new potential number one receiver. I know we're kind of basing this off of one, like super phenomenal game, but Devontae Adams had himself a game. And I mean, you know, if he can be the man on the outside that can free up Jordy to do some things on the inside. And I'm just kind of wondering is Devontae, did we just see him have his breakout performance? And this is the Devontae that we'll be seeing. So dusty, if the coin is heads, you're going to be telling me that Devontae is potentially going to be the number one going forward this year. And it's tails. There's still a little bit sweet. There's still a little bit of skepticism <laughs> about Devontae Adams. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've seen this, not, not this game. I mean, this game was preposterous. He caught, over 80% of his passes for 132 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, one of the touchdowns was wide open. One of the touchdowns um, kind of reminded me of James Jones where he had like kind of back to the end zone and like really had to fight back through uh, the defender to catch it. Uh, just, just pretty impressive stuff. Um, but so, I mean, but, but we have seen this out of Devonte Adams before. Uh, not exactly like this, but uh, a couple of years ago, it was rookie year actually. And we were at the game, uh, which was awesome. The Patriots game. Again, not exactly like this. He caught six of eleven targets for 121 yards, and that was all right, man. Well, this is uh, this we've we've got our guy now. We've got our guy. He's this is exactly what we thought he was going to be. He kind of struggled up to that point, and then he kind of fell off a little bit. Um, I think his next game was decent, and then after that, he just I don't think he had a, a decent game after after that too much. Uh, and then he started, you know. Then last year was the same thing. Like from what I've seen from Devonte Adams, he's capable of these flashes. Um, he can be very, very good. He's not a fast guy, but he's got good body control. He's got like big hands and theoretically is a good pass catcher. But so far, we have not seen that. What I've seen so far, Devonte Adams has just been like, like one word. One word is just he's just been inconsistent. Like he'll show these flashes and he'll show like, man, this past week he was sharp out of cuts and he know where to, he knew where to be and he was uh, using his body like he needed to and he was getting his hands in the right spot and he was picking when he needed to pick. And then you just like I wouldn't be shocked if next game he catches one pass on eight targets and he's like rounding out his routes and 
dropping easy passes. He's he's always been a guy. He'll make spectacular ones. He'll drop some easy ones. Like I've not seen anything, even going back to college, I've not seen anything out of him that suggests that he's going to be a top flight wide receiver. He seems like a guy who's going to flash every now and then. He's going to look really, really good. Games like this, he's going to get your hopes up. And then eventually he's just going to kind of settle back into his, he's going to catch 55% of passes and he's not going to put up a thousand yard season. And maybe he'll, he's a big body and maybe he'll luck into nine touchdowns on a season or something. But I, I, if this was his leap, man, I'm all for it. That'd be very, very exciting. But I, so far from what I've seen from Adams, again, going back to college, I just, I don't really see it out of him at this point. I don't really think it's coming. Jordan, Devontae Adams, the real deal. All right. Um, I mean, certainly to echo a little bit about what Dusty was saying in terms of inconsistency. Yes. Uh, inconsistent for sure. I mean, we, we've seen the games and that, that he's, that he's played very well in this last one included in that, the, the Cowboys playoff game for sure. But I mean, you can go back and you can see even <clears throat> other, <clears throat> excuse me, other, uh, uh, Packers receivers in the early parts of their careers. I mean, guys like James Jones, even guys like Jordy Nelson had issues with drops and and and, and stuff like that. Um, so perhaps you know Devontae was just in that kind of crowd where he can finally make that leap to to becoming a, a consistent, productive receiver. Not to mention, you know, we played the Bears this past Thursday. The next uh, next three games we have is a good run of games to have for a a wide receiver. I mean, we were playing the Falcons, not a good pass defense. Colts and Titans, just not good teams. Period. Um, it's it's a good opportunity for him uh, to 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 make that leap. Not to mention, of all the Packers receivers, he seems to be the only one. Um, you know, even even in the other games where he wasn't producing so much, he seemed to be the only one that was getting open on a consistent basis. I mean, he was he's been he's been dominating the targets from Rodgers. You know, this whole this whole year, he's been getting the most of the throws. Um, and most of the time that's been a discouraging thing for Packers fans, <laughs> but now we, we watch this bears game. We're like, all right, we see what this guy can do. You know, it was, it's for, you talk about Jordy's mental state. I mean, I think it's, it's this guy's mental state. So maybe a couple years in the league, a little more old or a little older, a little more mature. Um, I think this, this could be a start of a, of a really nice career for him. All right. Uh, I guess it's time for me to choose a winner here. And um, Jordan, no, I I am going to declare you the winner. Whoa! Oh, I oh. didn't see this coming. I Brian's didn't either. going to be really upset when he comes back. <laughs> I'm going to declare you the winner, Jordan, sure um, and I am going to also give you a prize for winning, Jordan. Really? What's my prize? Your prize is that you get to tell us about the best sponsor in the world. Huh? That is a great prize. Yes, best sponsor in the world, Pride and Glory Clothing Company. Um, we've talked about in the past or this, this whole, this whole season, even part of last season, if you're looking to, uh, upgrade your Packers wardrobe, if you're looking for new shirts, new sweatshirts to, to be decked out in on game day and, and throughout the week and even throughout the off season, be sure to check out pride and glory, six, com. A lot of great stuff there. Pride and glory, six, com. Check New York Bozo, New York Bozo. All right. Joining us tonight, we got Gina Thomas. She is joining us all the way from the Gina. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Thanks. Thank you for having me. It's very nice to have you. And um, I know that I know that uh, Falcons are just super, super hot right now. And it seems like it seems like anytime these two teams get together, Packers and Falcons, it's just an absolute shootout. And um, I'm kind of I'm kind of looking forward to seeing hopefully something like that. And hopefully with the Packers coming out on top, who knows, but um, uh, um, hopefully, hopefully you can give us a little bit of insight as going to be seen on the other side of the ball this week. And um, why don't you go ahead and start uh, talking to us about um, this, no this number one offense in the league and, and what we should be looking for. The main reason that Atlanta has been successful in offense is that Matt Ryan has been able to spread the ball around. Uh, when they played the Seahawks, I think that he hit 10 different receivers. He's hitting, you know, seven or eight different guys each week. And so that's really made a difference because when you have somebody like Julio Jones on the field and then you have, you know, six or seven other guys who can catch the ball. Um, it really makes it difficult for defenses because you have to dedicate extra resources to Julio Jones or he's going to go off for like 
300 yards like he did against the Panthers and man. So um, that's really the key thing. One of the things, though, that's a concern is that Tevin Coleman, who's a big factor in this offense, is going to be out this week with a hamstring injury. So that does take away one of those weapons, and that's a little bit problematic. Okay. And um, let's let's kind of switch our focus to the other side of the ball. Um, I know that Pam kind of kind of getting their offense in gear and um, what what should we be looking at? I mean, how how do you see their defense stopping the Packers this week? You know, this is not this Atlanta defense is not what I would call a good defense, but they are a defense that's getting incrementally better every week. And one of the areas in which they're getting better is with the pass rush. And you guys know Aaron doesn't like to be hit. Um, he doesn't like to be hit. He doesn't respond well to it. He gets a little bit salty, you know. And so if they can get to Rodgers and disrupt his game, they've got a better chance of beating the Packers. It's never easy against Green Bay. And, you know, of course, Falcons fans have horrible memories of the 2010 postseason, which I really never want to talk about or think about again. But, like, <laughs> yeah, if they can get to Rodgers and disrupt his game, that gives them the best shot. Uh, there's some weakness in the secondary. The free safety is somewhat of a liability. He's a converted corner. Big Ten guy had came out of Purdue, Ricardo Allen. He played really well last season, but kind of taken a step back this season. Um, and so he's a liability, someone that Rodgers can pick on. But otherwise, they've got some real strengths, some young players on defense who are really fast and able to cover. So it it's not going to be an easy day for Green Bay, I don't think. Okay. And what and what do you, uh, what's your outlook going into the rest of the season? I mean, are things pretty optimistic in Atlanta right now? Are we you thinking know, playoffs, possible Super Bowl? What's going on yeah. down there? I was just on our podcast for our site, Falcoholic, and um, we were discussing this. And what I said was the rest of the NFC South is hot garbage. I mean, the Panthers are trash. <laughs> the Saints are trash. Everybody is trash. And I just, <laughs> the Bucks are bad. You know, I mean, they're just all terrible. So it's Atlanta's division to lose. Unless they just completely implode like they did last season, they should win the division, make the playoffs. I think that there's reason to be concerned as far as like the way that the Falcons have played over the past two weeks in terms of what they might do when they get to the postseason, but I think they will certainly get there. Okay. And how do you see the game on Sunday shaping? Maybe possibly um, after you're done uh, telling us that, give us a final prediction as to what you think the score is going to be, Gina. Yeah, I think that this is going to be a tough game. Um, I think that it's going to be a high scoring game, just knowing what both of these offenses are capable of. I am going to guess that Atlanta comes out on top just from the benefit of being at home. Um, so I'm going to say, you know, 31, 28 Falcons. All right. I mean, I, I guess I'm not like all right with the score, but <laughs> 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 um, it, I, I mean, I it being um, a high scoring game and I mean, it's going to take a lot for the Packers to shut down that offense, especially where our defense is at. So, I mean, you, you, you're right in saying that, I think so. Um, but Gina, I really appreciate you uh, spending some time. And if you want to go ahead and um, give yourself a little bit of a plug right here so um, all of our uh, followers can give you a follow. Yeah, great. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Gina Thomas. All right, Gina. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And Thank, thank um, you for having me. Hopefully you enjoy staying on there for us because we're starting to get cold up here. Yeah, so. it's still, still hot here, so. <laughs> All right, Gina, have a good night. Thanks, guys, you too. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Check New York Bozo, New York Bozo. All right, well, now it is time to get to our breakdown of the game this week, and if Brian was here, he would be talking to us about the keys to winning this game. So I'll just, I'll just make one point real quick and simple. We have to shut down Julio Jones somehow, some way, Shut down Julio Jones any way possible, whether it's um, Frank Zombo coming out of retirement and crushing one of his kneecaps or something. Um, I, think, I don't I wish think injury. I think Zombo is still in the league, by the way. Is, 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 is he? Is he? Yes, he, he is. is. He, dang it. Well, <laughs> regardless. Actually, Bonnie better, Holiday. Better, better yet. Bonnie better yet. Holiday. Tom Tom Crabtree, let's get him back um, <laughs> and just put him out there for one play. That tattooed freak can uh, do something good for once and, and take, and, and take care of business. 
Dusty's like Dusty is the number one fan of Tom. I'll Kirk. not have you besmirch the name of Tom. <laughs> Kirk. Okay. Not while I'm around, Mister. That's, that's, su- that's Super Bowl champion Tom Crabtree. That's Let's right. Let's use right. his entire title. All right, all right, guys. I'm sorry, Tom Crabtree. Don't come and kill me. <laughs> um, Dusty. So now that we've got the key to victory, stopping Julio, tell me about um, tell me about some numbers that we're going to be seeing or that you have for us this week. I mean, that's really all we need to do, right? We need to stop Julio. I mean, that's that's <laughs> that's, that's the main thing. Uh, when they've won, he's, I mean, he's gone off and he's, I mean, if you want to look at, I mean, a 300 yard game, which was just 300 yards for a receiver. Like that's preposterous. Um, he had a couple down games, but like his past two games, he has a combined 313 yards. <clears throat> and one of those was against the chargers, which, you know, it's the chargers. One of those games came against Seattle and they lost the game, but like 139 yards receiving against Seattle on close to 80% completion is preposterous. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's obviously the number one. We got to slow him down. Um, we were talking uh, a little pre-show about this and uh, this one of the things uh, Jordan, I believe brought up was we thought Odell was going to kill us and, and we held Odell in check. Uh, so it, it can be done. Um, the, the thing I like about these kinds of games where we have someone like this, and not saying the Falcons are one dimensional. They've got some other guys that can catch the ball, but it kind of forces the defense to be a little more creative, forces capers to be creative, to take him away. And he's shown so far this year that he can do that. So hopefully he'll stay awake and be able to do that. So um, <laughs> here's a couple uh, numbers. I just kind of want to throw at you. So uh, I mentioned it earlier. The Falcons are four and three. Um, I was thinking they were like a powerhouse, uh, but they're four and three and they're a very good offensive team and a very bad offensive team. So one of the things I want to look at was, how the Falcons have looked against teams this year and then how the teams have looked when they've played teams other than the Falcons. I figured that could give a pretty good feel of how the Falcons uh, have looked so far this year. So uh, when playing against the Falcons this year, uh, the teams that they have played are have scored close to four points more against the Falcons than they have against the other teams, uh, which is which is good. Uh, the bad news is that the Falcons are scoring roughly 10 points more per game than the other teams have given up. So uh, kind of what we thought, bad offense or bad defense, good offense, but their offense is much better uh, than their than their bad defense. So uh, that's going to be scary, especially, I mean, we've talked about this before, The the all the people they've got down on their defense is just, it's kind of a killer. And, and they played well last week, uh, but you just wonder how they're going to go against a multifaceted offense like the Falcons have. Uh, it's, it's a little scary. Um, but then looking at the offensive side, uh, Rodgers in dome has completed like 68% of his passes, uh, 40 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Like he's, he's been, he's been very good in domes and he's been very good against the Falcons. Uh, it's always hard, uh, looking at just one quarterback versus one team because personnel changes so much, but against the Falcons, he's close. He's, uh, he's four and two. He's completing close to 69% of his passes with nine touchdowns and one interception. And I, I like, that's, that's amazing. Uh, his passing rating is 116 against the Falcons. Uh, and the Falcons do have a better pass rush. That's one of the things Rodgers have had a hold all day to throw against them in the past. And they'll be able to get to him a little bit this game. But that offensive line is so good. And then maybe with another week on Niall Davis, uh, they'll be fine. So I like think in the running game in Montgomery back there as well. Uh, they're not going to be one-dimensional. And if they are, they showed against the Bears, they can be effective against that. So uh, it's – I don't know. I'm – I'm nervous about this game, man. Like everything I looked at the numbers, I just kept thinking some of these numbers are going to tell me some good news, right? Like something's going to tell me that the Packers have an edge somewhere. (laughs) Uh, And aside from just Aaron Rodgers being on fire against the Falcons and good in domes, like I'm not not really seeing anything. (laughs) It's, it's a little upsetting, Um, but I want to close with, uh, with what the average quarterback has done against the Falcons this year, because this makes me happy. So against the Falcons this year, so far, Falcons defense is giving up. So this is your average passer, 68% completion percentage per game, 7.29 yards per attempt, 308 yards per game. And in their seven games, they have given up 15 passing touchdowns. So, so they're going to give up yards and they're going to give up touchdowns. Uh, the Packers just have to take advantage of that. Um, and one last thing to look out for, which uh, this is just just something a little small. So on third down, this is just one thing to look out for. On third down, in passes deemed short right, which is anything within 15 yards of the line of scrimmage, 
Uh, the Falcons are averaging 7.39 yard, yards per attempt and completing 61% of their passes, and they're going there quite a bit. So uh, if it's third down, just watch passes to the short right because that's where the Falcons seem to like to go. Ooh, that is a nice little tidbit at the end. Nice closer, Dusty. Thanks. You I gotta... stumbled a little bit there, but I feel like I closed out. So. <laughs> People got the point. People got the point. And the last last thing I'll ask of you is do you have a final score prediction? Yeah, I do. So with that in mind, with the Falcons, with the poor defense and the good offense, uh, I do think the Falcons are going to put up points. Um, I think the Packers, again, I think they're going to come up with a game plan that is not going to stop Julio, but it's going to be able to slow him down a little bit. Uh, so I don't think they're going to, I don't think they're going to put up as much as maybe a lot of people would think they were, but still it's a fairly high scoring game. So all those things in mind, uh, I'm going 35, 27 Packers, 35, 27 pack on top. Jordan, you got, you got a, a Twitter question for us. We, we have, we have a Twitter question uh, for us to, to look at. And this is actually uh, coming uh, straight from, from my brother, a uh, loyal fan of the podcast. Um, his question is at this point in the season, what qualifies as a successful season for this year's team? Dusty, I'm going to ask you first. Man, I mean, before the season, uh, like we talked about earlier with with the way their schedule looked, uh, I'd say anything less than, at the very least, a Super Bowl appearance or NFC Championship appearance would have been uh, disappointing. Now, I mean, I know we've got high hopes for them still, um, and they can do good things, but with, man, with all the injuries they've got on the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball, I mean, if you looked at, any team uh, that that suffered some of the losses they have with uh, top three cornerbacks and both they had two running backs on the roster. Both those guys are gone. Uh, you look at any other team like that that's lost so many guys, uh, you would just assume that they're not going to do very well. Uh, and so at this point, uh, I mean, Super Bowl hopes are still there. You could get some guys back. But for a success, playoff win, man. I mean, if this team – Against, like I said, some of the the schedule's not as easy as it looks. If this team can get to the playoffs and get a playoff win, and whether that's either get to the NFC Championship game or or not, I mean, regardless of <laughs> regardless of what I'm going to say, if they end up losing in the playoffs, uh, because I will be very very upset, and you can't listen to me because I'm not logical. Uh, <laughs> if, if this team with all these injuries is able to do that and get a playoff win, especially if a lot of these injuries are long term, which a lot of them appear to be. I mean, it'd be hard not to consider that a success. And really beyond some of that, if they can get Rodgers right, if they can get the offense humming, um, and and you know going into next year they're going to be good, I'd consider that a success as well. Yeah. I, for me, I mean, obviously missing the playoffs, completely unacceptable. Even getting to the playoffs and, lo- and losing a playoff game, I, I think I think I'm right with you there. I, they they got to win a playoff game. Even if they get in as a wild card – as a 16, the, the odds of them, the way the standings are right now, the odds of them playing a team that they've already played in this regular season is pretty high. Yeah. So, uh, that, that bodes well. I mean, even if, even if we win or lose, you know, it's the fact that we have this, have, have that experience playing against that team. That's, that should be in our favor. Um, so I mean, for me, yeah, they, they got to get to at least the divisional round, you know, after that, then, then you're talking about playing potentially, you know, Seattle on the road, Dallas on the road, uh, you know, Minnesota. I mean, th- th- these are these are tough tasks if these teams keep playing the way they're playing. You know, we're, we're talking week eight, obviously a long way to go. But, um, yeah, I, I think I'm in the same boat. A successful season is one playoff win. Anything less than that is, is definitely a disappointment. So if we say if it's a repeat like or like it was last year where they get in the wild card, um, they beat uh, – or the, in the wild card round, they beat uh, the Redskins, who were not a great team in the regular season, and then right. lose to the Cardinals, who you looked at early, especially early in the season, Super Bowl favorite. So if they basically had a repeat of that in the playoffs, you consider that a success, more or less? I mean, it's with heartbreaking, way, but the way they well, look. Well, of course. I mean, it, it's you, you be, being, a, being a Packers fan and just talking about the Packers, I mean, the standard is very high, obviously. But we talk about the injuries – injuries particularly this year i mean we have two of our positions skill positions that are completely depleted that's so tough to recover from and make a and make a playoff run it doesn't it doesn't look like it's getting better i mean Lacey's on ir i mean we're probably not seeing we're not seeing probably seeing shields the rest of the year you know randall's out for a long time who knows if he's going to play even close to 100 percent this season i mean those are two positions that you don't see improving much 
by the end of the year, even into the playoffs. So that's just, it's such a tough ask to make a huge playoff run. I mean, you're, you would need another superhuman effort from our offense to just, to just, you know, play out of their minds for a couple games in January and, and hopefully get to the, get to the big game. But that's, that's the odds aren't, the odds aren't with us in that. I don't believe. Yeah. yeah I'm with you there. And the famous words of the little man from angels in the outfield, it could happen. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. and and Jordan, let's let's just bring the focus back on uh, this week's game for a second. Do you have a final score prediction? I do. Um, yeah, when, when with Dusty talking about the the stats and all that, I mean, there's you're you're right. There's there's not a lot to to look uh, optimistically on with with matchups in this game or something that we can you know definitely exploit. And another thing that's different about this Falcons team is. Uh, their their head coach is different than 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 what we I think the last time we played them they had Mike Smith as their coach mm-hmm. now we're talking Dan Quinn who is a defensive coach and who has uh, you know faced off against Aaron Rodgers in this offense before um, so this is a guy who's not unfamiliar with the way Mike McCarthy coaches this offense up and I'm not I, I don't <laughs> that that doesn't get me excited about this game uh, the fact that we're playing on the road again just the the injury issue at cornerback with with their offense I I think it's I think it's a very tall order to to win this game, and I, and I honestly think it's a little too tall of an order. I'm going I'm going Falcons twenty eight, Packers twenty four. This is also Jordan's last week on the podcast, everybody. <laughs> so, um, Jordan, Jordan, when we do our final thoughts, you can give a nice long closing, however long you want. And, I've, I've, um, I've, I've prepared I've prepared something. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna and I'm gonna boost our spirits back up because some of your spirits probably just got crushed by Jordan's <laughs> prediction. So I am. I am saying that the Packers that the Packers offense is back and I'm loving I'm loving this matchup this week. I love I love A Rod in a dome. I think he's a real deal when it comes to a dome. For some reason, he just loves it. So um I'm going thirty four twenty four Packers this week. And and everyone's gonna be super stoked when I get it right. So um that's <laughs> that's that. Dusty, do you have any uh, final thoughts for us today as we close out? I do. Uh, so, okay, my new favorite thing, uh, which I brought up last week and I'm very, very excited about, is uh, we've talked about this. I love bad quarterback matchups. And my new favorite thing is now looking at ESPN on the ESPN schedule thing. They have uh, the tickets, uh, say, basically <laughs> ticket prices, cheapest ticket prices uh, through StubHub for the games for the for the next week. And so I'm not looking at those and seeing what the cheapest tickets to go to are. And then sometimes, like this past week, for example, the cheapest one, I think for $34 as of last Tuesday, you could have gotten tickets to the Falcons Chargers game, which ended up being a dynamite game uh, that I would have loved to have gone to. And it was $34. So you don't always get a bad game uh, for your money. This week, however, <laughs> it's, it's one I am very excited about. Uh this is uh, the Jets at the Browns. Um, and I, I want you guys to guess real quick. How, without looking, how cheap do you think the cheapest ticket is? Uh, th- again, this is in Cleveland. It's Jets at Cleveland. Jordan, what do you think the cheapest ticket is for this? Oh, I'll, I'll go, man. I'll go 27 John? $17. Oh, man. John gets it. $19. Honestly, oh. God, you can get a ticket. There are six thousand tickets available, and the cheapest one is nineteen dollars. Oh. And not only is this the cheapest game this weekend that you can go to, again in Cleveland, it's also a classic terrible quarterback matchup with <laughs> the Browns starting Kevin Hogan. Kevin Hogan, oh. he, played, he played this past week, and he was with Stanford, and he was decent with Stanford, but he's basically like a big running quarterback that can sometimes throw the ball like he's not a good quarterback and it's lovely and then if he gets injured guys who's sitting behind kevin hogan it's that's right it's joe callahan it's newly signed joe callahan playing backup for kevin hogan in cleveland that's exciting beyond that for new york because poor geno smith tore his acl which like Literally, just it, it breaks my heart, man. It legitimately breaks my heart that Geno Smith tore his ACL. But it also means that, like, super upset Ryan Fitzpatrick, who claims he only did well because the management didn't believe in him, not because he's a like, terrible quarterback. Ryan Fitzpatrick <laughs> is back in the starting position, and if he falters a little bit, who's sitting behind him? It's Bryce Petty. And then what if Bryce Petty goes down? 
It's Christian Hackenberg. My God, my God, these quarterbacks are terrible. Like this game is going to be amazing. It's going to be amazingly terrible and you can go for $19. So uh, that's my final thought, man. If, if you live anywhere near Cleveland, please, please, please pay $19 for a ticket. Go to this game and then report back to me on how awesome it was because I will be watching it. I'm very, very excited about this. That is, that is my final thought. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter at uh, at Dusty Evely. Is Kevin Hogan related to Hulk Hogan? Because that's, that's uh, you a know big... I I don't think he is, but he's kind of a stout guy. Like it's I guess it's possible. That's something. That's something that Hillary would say. A uh, fact check to. <laughs> and um, we, we got we to gotta fact we got to fact check that. And if he is, I'm going Browns to the Super Bowl. Um, somehow, some way, Hulkamania is going to run wild in Cleveland. <laughs> Jordan, what are your what are your what are your closing thoughts today? Uh, uh, first of all, I just I'm 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 picturing when you said Joe Callahan, I'm I'm just picturing like a double reverse with Callahan and Terrell Pryor. <laughs> Throwing back to Joe Callahan, and then he does a he 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 does a leap into the crowd at at first energy. Oh, that'd be great! That'd be great. I'd love that. Uh, Final thoughts. Um, Yeah, we're we're recording this during during Game One of the uh, of the World Series right now, and it's just for me. I I was I was talking to you guys about this before we started recording. It's 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 so ridiculous that that the Chicago Cubs don't get home field advantage of this just because of the stupid all-star game. It's just, I don't know. I'm, I'm watching it like this. It's, 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 it's fun watching this game at Cleveland, but I mean, this game one game, one should be it. Game one should be a regular. I'm, I'm, I'm planning to myself like, all right, if game six or game seven is at Wrigley field, that's going to be sweet, but it's not, it's going to be a progressive. And that's, that's a crying shame. Cool, dumb. That's my, that's, that's my final thought of the, uh, of the evening. Where, where are you at on Twitter, Jordan? Now that you're all fired up, I'm, fu- oh, I'm fired up. <laughs> hot, I'm, I'm hot, hot sauce. I'm fired up. <laughs> you can, <laughs> you can find, you can find me on Twitter at jgpeck41. By the way, guys, uh, Kevin Hogan is of no relation to Hulk Hogan. Uh, <sighs> I did just look it up. I apologize, John. Oh. Uh, you can, you can still call him Hulk Hogan, or you know, you can say that Cleveland is Hulkamania, or whatever you want to say. But there actually is no relation. I, I want to <laughs> make sure I get that on record right now. <laughs> my, my final thought is I am so excited to watch um, Hulk Hogan's son, Kevin Hogan, <laughs> play quarterback for the Cleveland Browns this weekend. And <laughs> but no, seriously, my final thought is I am jacked up beyond belief. Because tomorrow night is a kickoff of the Bucks NBA season this year. Oh. And mm-hmm. I cannot be more excited. I'm going to so many games this year. And uh, tomorrow is going to be the first of many. And I'm looking forward to see the Greek Freak and Bari just do work on some teams. And it's going to be Slam City in Milwaukee. <laughs> and um, it's, it's just going to be a beautiful, beautiful time. And looking forward to the new arena. And I mean... I think I got in at the right time with these season tickets because, you know, I have a nice locked-in rate, and the new arena is going to open up. We're going to be uh, NBA champions first year we're in it, and <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be unbelievable. Good so be fun team to watch. Who do the Bucks got tomorrow? The Bucks are playing the Horn. Not no, not the Hornets. The Pelicans. Oh, that's a win. That's a win. Yep, I think it's I think it's the Pelicans. I always get confused with the Charlotte and the. New Orleans teams are just, they always, they're always flopping like every couple of years. <laughs> so um, I always get confused on them. I think it's the Pelicans. So, um, but yeah, that will wrap us up tonight here. Uh, again, I want to thank Gina Thomas for joining us today. She was awesome. Very knowledgeable. Go, go check her out on Twitter, SB nation um, and all that stuff. And let's hope we're going to be reporting back to you guys next week after another Packers victory that's get a nice win streak going here. So, go Pack Go! We'll see you guys next week. Go Pack Go! Adios! Pack Go!